After partnering with HTC to produce the Vive in 2016, Valve has gone solo with its ambitious new premium VR headset, the Index. There's absolutely no getting around the fact that a full zero to index setup will cost you $1,000, which is two and a half times as much as the recently released Oculus Rift S, and yet somehow it's still cheaper than the Vive Pro. But if you have the budget and space to accommodate it, the Index is very arguably worth every penny thanks to its excellent screen and wide field of view, best available controllers, and reliable tracking. Having used Oculus's incredibly convenient inside-out tracking system on the Rift S and Quest, it was a drag to go back to setting up external sensors. However, the Lighthouse 2.0 base stations were extremely easy to plop down on perches in opposite corners of the room and plug into power. Everything automatically connected and worked flawlessly on the first attempt. Plugging into a PC was similarly simple. There's no obnoxious breakout box. A single cable cleanly splits at the end into USB, display port, and AC power. It was up and running in less than 10 minutes. Comfort is one of the big things we're paying for, and Index delivers in that department as well as generally high build quality. The head strap is similar to the Vive Pro, with rigid side pieces that are tightened and loosened by a ratcheting knob on the back, and a Velcro strap to hold it on the top of the head. It's a big step up from the original Vive and Oculus Rift. The wider field of view makes the scuba goggle effect of most VR headsets almost completely disappear, immediately setting the Index apart from every other VR headset I've tried. The impressive 1440x1600 per eye resolution is equal to the Vive Pro's, and greater than the Rift S's 1280x1440. Naturally, there's an IPD slider to adjust the lens width, and two forward-facing cameras allow for binocular pass-through video. This LCD screen produces the best VR image I've ever seen. It's still not entirely free of god rays and halos when looking at bright lights or white text in dark environments, but it still looks fantastic and the screen door effect is minimal. But it's not just the picture quality that sets the index apart. In the settings, you can enable either a 120Hz or experimental 144Hz refresh rate. 120Hz is a significant upgrade over the usual 90Hz you'll find in tethered VR headsets, but I found the benefit to be subtle rather than dramatic. Mostly, it's a bit easier on the eyes after a long session. The built-in headphones are the most comfortable possible design in that they don't actually touch your ears at all, and yet the sound quality and positional 3D audio is excellent, and there's not even much sound bleed. The part of the headset that actually touches your face, the gasket, is attached magnetically, making it extremely easy to pop off. Only one gasket is included, but for another $40, Valve will sell you two more so you can swap it out if somebody gets it all sweaty and gross. The Index controllers are the most forward-looking part of the package, and they represent a huge upgrade over the clunky Vive wands in functionality and comfort. The big deal is their ability to sense whether each of your fingers is individually extended or closed, which it does with a fair but far from 100% degree of accuracy. It can even tell if you're just closing your hand versus squeezing with some force. And because they're strapped to your hands, you can completely let go and see your in-game hands fully open. Actions like throwing virtual objects are much more intuitive here than with the Oculus Touch or Vive One. They recharge from a USB-C port on the bottom of the handle, and the seven hour battery life has been good enough that I've never had them even come close to dying on me mid-session. I can imagine a lot of uses for the sensors and finger tracking tech in these controllers. A Spider-Man game where you close your middle and ring fingers to shoot webs, or a wizard battle with hand gestures for casting spells, or a tea party simulator. But none of that exists just yet, and outside of Valve's hilarious but brief Aperture Hand Lab or the Moon Dust tech demos, early adopters aren't going to have much to use it for until developers get a chance to implement support. It's a shame that Valve didn't launch a full finger tracking VR game to make the Index controllers feel more immediately important right out of the box. The new base stations are functionally very similar to the original, with the main new feature being that you can connect up to four of them to cover a huge 10 meter by 10 meter playable area to go well beyond room scale. Most home VR users won't be able to make much use of that though. The 2.0 base stations are also slightly sleeker and have a curved front face, giving them a wider field of view than their predecessors. That said, if your space is already sufficiently covered by 1.0 base stations, which is generally easy to do, their tracking quality doesn't seem noticeably different from the previous generation so there's no need to throw the old ones away. You're likely better off saving yourself the 250 bucks and buying the headset and controller separately, since they're fully compatible with the old base stations. Valve's Index is a premium VR set for enthusiasts, those of us who have a powerful PC, 
the space to set up external tracking to cover a large area with reliable and precise motion tracking, intend to spend hours at a time shut off from the world in our virtual domains, and who want to experience the cutting edge of finger tracking input devices. It justifies its high $1,000 price with a high quality screen capable of 144Hz refresh rates and a noticeably wider field of view as well as controllers that strap to your hands and let you fully open your fingers, which it can track individually. It's forward-looking, so early adopters might not see its full potential for a while. But even now, the Index is arguably the best way to experience VR. For more on VR, check out our reviews of Trover Saves the Universe, Ghost Giant, and Falcon Age. And for everything else, stick with IGN.